Hey guys, come for MC here again. Welcome to our 21st LVP tutorial. Today what I'm going to do is show you a real simple way of measuring speed in Little Big Planet. Uh, it's rumored that there's going to be a speed sensor in the uh, Move uh, expansion, the DLC that's coming in September. Um, but if you can't wait that long or you just want to see a nice application of some analog signals, I'm going to show you guys how speed sensors work and then show you uh, a quick application that you could use it for. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is pull out a piece of hologram material. And our method for measuring speed is basically going to be we're going to track the player. So we're going to make a piece of hologram material follow the player. And we're going to make it so the material will be a, fur a further distance away from the sack boy if he's running faster and basically what we're going to do is use that distance to measure a analog signal a percentage signal and we're going to use that to measure our speed if we set up our tweaks right okay so the first thing I'm going to do is put a microchip on here and I'm going to put a player sensor only have a radius of five so it's pretty small and we're going to invert it. Okay, so the way that it works when you invert it is if the player is right in the middle of the sensor, it's going to turn off. It's going to set a zero signal. And if it was at all the way out five or greater, it'd be at 100%. So if you was somewhere in between, we'd have a signal somewhere in between there. Now, the reason that I'm doing that is because I'm I want it so when you're further away from the center, you're going to output a 100% signal or whatever signal and we're going to interpret that. So I'm going to put a follower on here. And I am going to wire this inverted player sensor right into the follower. Now this follower, we're going to set its maximum speed to 10. I do that for a reason because when we start calculating our percentages, the fact that this is at 10 is going to make it easier to interpret the signals that we're getting out. Acceleration at 100, and we're going to set the input action type to speed scale. That's important here. And minimum detection range 0. Maximum is fairly large. So could get away with that. It's fine. And we're following the player. So what's going to happen here is that if I'm right in the middle of this player sensor, it's, it's inverted, so it's outputting zero signal, and so it's telling the mover not to follow, which is not an issue because we're already right in the middle. If I move to the side a little bit, it's going to give it a little bit of signal, which is allowing the follower to move a little bit. And it, it, because we have it inputting speed signal, it actually, it actually follows pretty smoothly. And you'll notice that if I run faster, I'm able to move away from the center of that follower just a little bit. So we're almost there already. That's the amazing thing about this. It's really super simple. Um, the only thing I want to do is make it so I'm not outputting a signal when there's no player there at all. So if like the player died or they're not to this speed sensor yet, I want it to not output a signal. And so the only thing that I'm going to do to do that is to just use an AND gate and you'll have to excuse the lightning going on in the background it's storming here. <coughs> so we're going to use an AND gate with our signal and we're going to make it so it'll only output a signal if you're within say 10 units of this speed sensor which if you're within the 10 units that follower is going to pick up on you it's going to lock onto you anyways and so that 10 units is all the bigger it needs to be. Now if I were to wire this into the AND gate and then wire this directly to the AND gate we're going to have two analog signals that are kind of doing work here we're going to get an analog signal from here and an analog signal from here now, I don't want that I would, I would prefer that that bottom player sensor just outputs a 100% assuming I'm in range and that's where I can use a trusty selector wire to the bottom node and then wire from the output bottom node back to the top input node and so what that does is as soon as I'm getting an on signal from the player sensor, it's going to output a 100% signal from the selector. 
And as soon as I leave that radius, it's just going to reset back to zero. And so there's going to be no signal going into this AND gate. And then I'm going to wire that up into my, my analog signal probe just so I can see what my signal's at right now. And you'll see that if I move a little bit, it's going to output a number. You'll see about 1 there, about 1.1. 1 .1. What that means is it's got a speed of 1.1 1 .1 as per the, the speed kind of units in Little Big Planet. And to show you how I figured out why putting a, a 10 speed on this will do that for us, I made another one up here. It's the same idea. Let's see if I can stop them. I have basically the same follower system here, only I'm using a tag instead of a player. And then I'm just moving this tag at a speed of 3. So the maximum speed is 3. And so what this signal should be picking up is a 3 speed, 3.0. And it does, in fact, do that. So that's how I figured out that it was accurate. And so what I can do is come down here, and this will tell us a little bit about how fast Sackboy moves when he runs. So if I run to the right, it's about a 4.19. If I move to the left, it's about a 4.28. So about the same, but interestingly enough, Sackboy runs faster to the left than he does to the right. So if you're ever trying to make something go about the same speed as Sackboy, you could make it go a little over 4.1, maybe 4.2 and it should be about the same. Now this would be all be fine and well if we didn't have an application for it, but I'm going to show you a real quick simple one and just to kind of set up what I'm going to need for that, I'm going to wire a tag, a signal into a tag so I can communicate wirelessly here. Let's we'll see what I'm doing in a second. But basically I'm wiring this signal right into a tag and so this is going to send a whatever signal I have so whatever is going to show up on here is going to be sent through this tag. And I'm going to interpret it with this little thing I've set up already. Okay, so what this is, it's just a piece of hologram. I put a microchip on it and then put a tag sensor, a green one, matched with this tag over here. Now to make it so it reads that analog signal, I just set the output type to signal strength instead of closeness. And so this is going to read the signal as long as it's in that radius. And it's not going to read any signals outside of the set radius. So if it's 50, any signal that I'm getting through a green tag in that radius is going to come through this wire here. And then I wire that into a selector. And I put some stuff on this selector after I have set it to positional. So because I have it set to positional and because I have 10 stripes, every time I go up 10% on my signal, it's going to move to the next stripe. So there's 10 stripes. So that means that right here where I have all these things starting to trigger is at 15% signal. So if I have a 1.5% speed being read, uh, read on here, that's just a 15% signal. And so that means it's going to activate whatever it is I'm wanting here. And I just have it playing a sound and then activating a lethal type plasma. So what that means is if I sneak through here and go slower than 1.5, nothing happens. As soon as I, excuse me, as soon as I go faster than 1.5, it plays the sound and it electrocutes you. So essentially what I've made here is a, a system that detects if you're going over a threshold speed and it activates something if you are. So an application you could use this for is if there was like a motion sensor in the level and you had to sneak past it. If you're moving too fastly, the motion sensor would activate and it'd kill you. So it's a real quick application of how you could use this speed sensor. I know a lot of people have tried to make speed sensors before for portal themed and portal inspired levels. Uh, you could definitely do that as well where you store a signal that you get from this speed and you use that to determine a speed of an admit emitted object so you could do conservation of momentum through a portal for example okay so yeah that's pretty much it for speed sensing it's it's really straightforward you just invert a player sensor and wire it into a follower and if you set that follower speed to 10 
then say a 10% signal is going to correspond to a one speed. And that's just what I've set up over here. The percentage is displayed in those first two digits. If I just put a decimal point between them, that tells us the speed that the player is moving. So yeah, speed sensors are cool, but they're really simple. Hope you guys uh, learned something, and take care. See you around. The tutorials will unleash not only exciting tools and objects, but knowledge and the deepest secrets of the cosmos.